Hello everybody. Today we'll be talking about dynamic games with incomplete information. Dynamic games with incomplete information are sequential and incomplete. Again, going over these definitions, sequential means that the players don't go at the same time, they go in order. Player one goes first, chooses their action, then player two goes. Incomplete means one or more of the players is lacking knowledge about the payoffs of the game. Here you can see where it falls within the matrix that I showed in the initial video. It falls in a perfect Bayesian equilibrium. Now, what is a perfect Bayesian equilibrium? The definition of a perfect Bayesian equilibrium is that a PBE is a set of strategies and beliefs such that the strategies are sequentially rational given the player's beliefs and players update beliefs via Bayes rule whenever possible. Now, that definition had a lot of words in it, so let's break down what it means. Again, as normal, the equilibrium is the point at which neither player wants to change their position. It's the best in the given scenario. But what does the beliefs part of this definition mean? Beliefs represents what I believe I am and what my opponent's type is. The reason beliefs come into play over here is because one of the players is lacking knowledge and the players don't go at the same time in this case. One player goes, then the second player goes. So we can build beliefs based on either what the previous player played or nature's probability of having one type versus the other type. Now, how do we find these beliefs? I'll show you an example later of how we find the beliefs in two scenarios on two different games. When we use Bayes' rule, we have to make sure that we only use it whenever possible, meaning that the probability is greater than zero. So, like I mentioned, there are two types of games. There are screening games and signaling games within dynamic games with incomplete information. What is a screening game? A screening game is a game where there are two players, player one, player two. Player one goes first, then player two goes. But player one lacks knowledge about the payoffs. Player two does not lack knowledge. Player two knows what type they are. Player one again does not know. Now, with a signaling game, there are again player one, player two. But in this case, player one that goes first has the knowledge. Player one knows about the payoffs, they know what type they are. This is important because it allows player two to build a theory or a belief based on whatever player one played. Now this makes signaling games significantly harder than screening games, which is why I'll go over them later. First we'll start off with screening games. Now, our example of the screening game in this case is going to be about car salesmen. So, we start off with nature. Nature randomly chooses if player two is selling a bad car or player two is selling a good car. The probability of player two selling a bad car is P. The probability of player two selling a good car is one minus P. And you can see the other options over here where player one chooses first. Player one has the option to back out or make an offer. Then if player one chooses make an offer, player two has the option to choose and player two has the option to bargain or accept. So, we can use backwards induction in this case to make this tree a little bit easier and take out cases that aren't probable. So we'll first look at this tree on the left. So player two has the option to bargain or accept. Seeing that point se negative 0.7 is smaller than zero, player two will most likely, or player two will definitely accept the offer. Now, player two on the right-hand case has the option again to bargain or accept. Seeing that 0.7 is greater than zero, player two will definitely bargain in this case. Now, we'll simplify the tree, as you can see over here, getting rid of the improbable cases. Normally, we would move farther up in the tree, getting rid of either make offer or back out as player one's option but we cannot do this in this case because player one lacks knowledge. So player one doesn't know which one to take out because they don't know what type player two is. So, as I said, we can't go any further in eliminating options since this is all the information that the players know. 
Right now, we'll calculate the utility as I did in the previous video. The utility of backing out ends up being zero. The utility of making offer ends up being 1.7p minus 0.7. Then we get p is greater than 0.412, where p represents player one's belief that player two is selling a bad car. What does p being greater than 0.412 mean? So if p is greater than 0.412, it means that player one makes an offer, and player two will accept this offer if they are selling a bad car. If they are selling a good car, they will bargain. Now, if P is less than 0.412, we'll have the opposite. Player two will quit, that being the end, that's just the end of the game. And as usual, if P is equal to 0.412, then player one has the option to go either way. This has been screening games. I'll go over signaling games in the next video. See you guys there!